In this video, let's take a look at graphing sine and cosine. So sine and cosine graphs come straight from our unit circle. So in this first box, we're going to fill in this table of values to pick out the degrees or radians from our unit circle and what would that cosine value be in that coordinate. So I said over here in your notes already preloaded, the graph of cosine is derived directly from the unit circle. Cosine is the x value of each point. We're going to use each x value of the five major points to create the graph of cosine. It starts at 1, and it looks like a U-shaped graph. So notice, like, the graph looks kind of like a U-shape. That's what that means. All right, so cosine is the x value of each point. So up here on your paper, I want you to write down cosine, sine. Cosine is always the x value of each coordinate, and sine is always the y value of each coordinate. Very important, simple thing to keep in mind. So if we go to our degrees or radians on our unit circle and we find zero or zero pi, that is this first spot right here where we start, like our initial starting point. And we see that the cosine value right there is one. So notice over here, zero is our starting point, like zero pi or zero degrees over here on our graph goes with one. It directly relates to the unit circle. So let's look at 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is right here at the top of the unit circle. Notice it makes a 90 degree angle with where we started from. And the cosine value is again that x value. So just pick out 0 for that one. And then notice over here on your graph that pi over 2 is plotted at 0. So that's where those values are coming from. At 180 degrees, we're over here now. So notice like we go 180 degrees from our starting point and we end up right here. And the cosine value is that x value of that coordinate, which is negative 1. So notice on our graph, we say that's pi, because that's what goes with our radian measure for 180 degrees. And we plotted it at negative 1. So again, your graph is coming directly from your unit circle. So let's look at 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. So that's when we go from our starting point around to 270 degrees, our cosine value will be that x value, which is 0. So notice on the graph that that's what's plotted over here. So 3 pi over 2, that's why that's plotted at 0. And then 2 pi would be a complete rotation. So we go from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, which is equivalent to 2 pi. And then we're back to x equals 1, because that's our cosine. That's our x coordinate at that point. So notice on the graph, 2 pi goes with 1. And so the cosine graph, if you just look at one period of the graph, like one complete cycle, it looks kind of like a U-shaped graph. So notice like a period is from 0 pi to 2 pi, one complete rotation around the unit circle. Actually, I should start here to do that. So one complete rotation creates one complete period of our cosine graph. They are directly related. So let's look at the sine values for our unit circle. So in the same way, we're going to look at the y value of each coordinate and plot those on our graph. So if we go back to 0 degrees or 0 pi, notice our sine value right there is 0, the y value. So let's go down here to our table and let's put 0. And then notice on the graph that that definitely relates to what we have plotted right there. 0 pi is plotted at 0. Then 90 degrees is the next one. So if you go from this starting point and you go 90 degrees, like rotate around, you see that sine would be 1 because that's the y value right there at that coordinate. So let's put 1 in the table. So notice pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, is just at 1. Then 180 degrees or pi. So if we go from that starting point over here, and we rotate around 180 degrees, we end up right there. And then the sine value is that y value, which is 0. So let's write that in the table. Then notice over here on our graph that it is plotted that way. Pi is located at 0. Then let's go to 270 and do the same thing. So from our original starting point, if we rotate around 270 degrees, then pick out that y value of negative 1. So let's write it. Just notice over here on your graph that it does coordinate with our graph of sine. 
And then 360 degrees is one complete rotation. So from that starting point all the way around back to the starting point, sine would just be a value of zero. And notice that's what happens on the graph. So again, the graph of sine and cosine are directly related to our unit circle. So starting at zero pi and going all the way around back to our starting point, if you look at the x values, they create the graph of cosine. And if you look at the y values of each coordinate, it creates a graph of sine. So notice one period of the sine function looks like kind of like an S-shaped graph, and then cosine looked kind of like a U-shaped graph. And that's going from that standard period of 0 to 2 pi, which is considered one full rotation of your unit circle. So let's just talk through some vocabulary words. Period that we've already mentioned is the, the period of the graph is the length of one cycle of the curve. Naturally, we normally look at 2 pi as being our period. So from 0 to 2 pi. And then they've got amplitude labeled right here. So we can go ahead and say that amplitude is from that midline, which is the middle of your curve, to the top of the graph or the middle of your curve to the bottom of the graph. So that's the amplitude. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Frequency is the number of cycles it completes in a given interval. So sometimes you can have a higher frequency and you can see more than one complete cycle between zero and two pi, for example. That would be considered a higher frequency. Midline sounds like it looks, looks like it sounds. It's that middle line that goes between the highest point and the lowest point. So it's the exact middle of the curve. And then amplitude, like we already mentioned, is when you go from the middle to the top of your graph or from the middle to the bottom of the graph, and then those should be the same no matter which way you look at it. So let's just look at graphing one of these functions. So we have already graphed the basic cosine and sine graphs on that first page, so let's not repeat those. Let's look at number three and number four. Those would be good to look at. So notice the five in the front, that is gonna make our amplitude equal to five. We're gonna use the period of two pi. So I'm gonna show you how to type this into Desmos to set this up so it's nice and easy to look at. So on your graph, I want you to put two things first. Put zero pi over here at the zero and put two pi over here at the end. Then an easy way to set this up is if you divide that in half, that would be pi. So that's like your midway point. Then divide that in half and put pi over two and divide the other side in half and put three pi over two. So it's a nice easy way to get your graph set up with those main points that we're gonna look for from Desmos. So let's pull up Desmos and let's type in five cosine of X. So type five first, go to functions, make sure trig is selected click cosine, and then type in your x. Now what happens is that is not set in radian measure, so we need to change our like window. So go to that little wrench in the corner, choose radians at the bottom, and notice it already is looking more like what we saw at the top of the page or on that other page. And then I want you to do another thing. I want you to set up your axis. So notice our x-axis goes from 0 pi to 2 pi. So make your minimum value 0 and make your maximum value 2 pi. And we're going up like a step means how far it is from that first point to that second point. So our steps are going to be pi over 2. So just type that in the step. And then for the y-axis, use your amplitude to set that up. So your amplitude is how far you're going to need to go up on the y-axis. So I'm going to put 5. And negative 5 is how far I'm going to need to go down. So just make that your smallest y-value is negative 5. Let me make sure I got the negative. There we go. Negative 5. And your highest is positive 5. And then let's see. This step could just be... Let's see, would one be okay? Yeah, one would be fine. So make that step equal to one. But it just gives you a nice look of your graph where 
you can see every point that you need to plot on your paper. So I'm going to just scoot over here and pick this first point out. So 0, 5 is the first point, so plot that right there. Then I can click easily on pi over 2, and I can see that's at 0. Then down here at the bottom of the curve, I can see I've got pi goes with negative 5. Moving along, I got 3 pi over 2 is back at 0. And then that last point that I need would be back at 5. And then it helps you just sketch a nice graph of the cosine of x with an amplitude of 5. But that's how you can set up Desmos to match what's on your paper. Let's do another one. Let's do a sine graph with an amplitude of 3. So let's clear that out. Put your amplitude would be that front number. It's like your A value. Our period is still going to be 2 pi. Unless you need to change that, there's no need to, to, to change it. So let's put zero, 0 pi, 2 pi. Just put it way over there on the end. Then divide it in half and put pi. Because half of 2 pi is just 1 pi. And then half of that is pi divided by 2. And then half of the other half is 3 pi divided by 2, because that's equivalent to 1 and a half. And then we're all set up again. So in your Desmos, let's type in 3 functions trig sine of x. And then it's still, I think, set up just about right. The x-axis has changed, so let's make that back to 0 and 2 pi with a step of pi over 2, so that stayed the same. The y-axis, I'm going to put negative 3 this time to positive 3. So let's put that over here. Positive 3 is the highest, and negative 3 is the lowest, because that's our amplitude. And we're still in radians, so everything's ready to go. So that just helps us pick these points out really nice and easy from your Desmos. So you got 0, we've got pi over 2 would go with 3, so plot that point. Pi is back at 0. 3 pi over 2 is at negative 3, and then 2 pi comes back to 0. So notice when you draw this sine graph, it looks kind of like an S-shaped graph. Okay, so knowing those basics of how to type it in Desmos would help you graph any trig function, and that definitely gets us started. So that's it for graphing sine and cosine.